According to Inca legends, there was a sun god named Contiki Veracocha, who was the supreme leader of the mythical fair-skinned people of Peru. Contiki was the high priest and sun king for these legendary bearded and fair-skinned men, who left huge ruins on the shores of Lake Titicaca. Legend has it that Contiki and his companions disappeared westwards into the Pacific Ocean. In this video, I will explore the stories told by the natives to the Spanish chroniclers regarding this mythical figure. Pedro Cieza de Leon arrived in Peru in 1548 as a simple soldier in a detachment sent to quell an uprising that had turned into civil war between the Spanish rulers of the country. He remained until 1550, during which time he visited almost every part of the newly conquered land, observing and recording descriptions of the terrain, the plants, the customs of the natives, and the major facets of their history. He had been keeping a journal of his observations ever since beginning his travels in Colombia in 1541, but now Ciesa became fascinated with the idea of writing a chronicle of Peru and its peoples. After completing his military duties, he would interview the Amautas and Orejones, the surviving wise men and noblemen of the Incas, as well as qualified Spaniards to learn all he could about the history and traditions of the conquered Inca Empire. He wrote in the foreword of his first book, quote, These things that I write here are true and things of importance and benefit, because many times while the other soldiers slept, I wrote into the night until I wearied." End quote. Ciesa's first work, La Crónica del Perú, was originally published in Sevilla in 1553, while the later El Scenario de los Incas remained unpublished until 1880. In chapter 5 of his Scenario, Ciesa recorded the following legend about the appearance of a white god to the forebearers of the Incas. Quote, Before the Incas ruled, or were even heard of in these kingdoms, these Indians speak of another thing much greater than all others which they tell, because they affirm that they went for a long time without seeing the sun, and that suffering tremendously with this deficiency, they raised great prayers and supplications to those they revered as gods, asking them to restore the light they lacked. And in this manner, there arose from the island of Titicaca, which is in the great lake of Culao, the sun shining brilliantly, which made them all very happy. And afterwards, they say that from the land of the noon sun, there came and appeared to them a white man of large build, whose aspect and person showed great authority and veneration. And this man had such supreme power that he leveled the mountains and raised up the plains into large hills, making water flow from the boulders and since they recognized his supreme power, they called him the creator of all things, their originator, father of the sun, because even this notwithstanding, they say that he did many greater things, because he gave life to men and animals, and from his hand they received notable benefit. According to the Indians who told it to me, who heard it from their fathers, who also heard it in the songs they preserved from antiquity, this man went towards the north, working many miracles in his journey through the mountains, and they never saw him again. In many places, they say that he gave commandments to the men about how to live, and that he spoke with love and much humility, admonishing them to be good, not to cause harm or injury to one another, but instead to love each other and have charity. Generally, they call him Tiki Veracocha, even though in the province of Colau they call him Tuapaca, and in other places he is known as Arnawan. Many temples were built to him in different places where they erected stone statues in his likeness, before which they offered sacrifices. The large stone figures in the city of Tiwanaku are said to date from that era, and even though by tradition inherited from the past, they recount this that I tell of Tiki Veracocha. They say nothing else about him, nor that he ever returned to any part of this kingdom. The following legend comes from an indigenous Peruvian chronicler named 
Juan de Santa Cruz Pachacute Yamcuy. Quote, Some years after the devils had been cast out of this land, there came to these provinces and kingdoms of Tabantisoyu, a bearded man of medium build with long hair, wearing a rather long tunic, and they say that he was more than a youth. He had white hairs, was slender, walked with the staff, and he talked to people with great love, calling them all his sons and daughters. But he was not always listened to, nor obeyed by all the people. And when he journeyed through the provinces, he performed many miracles, visibly. He healed the sick by touching them with his hands, and he didn't bring belongings, nor did he have herds of animals. This man, they say, spoke all of the languages of the provinces better than the natives, and they called him Tunupa or Tarapaka Vera Kochanapa. He chastised the people with great love by the Aputampu, meaning lodging house, and they listened to him with rapt attention, receiving the stick from his hand, such that in a stick they received what he preached to them, indicating and emphasizing each chapter of the discourse. This man, called Tunupa, they say, journeyed through all the provinces of Kulosoyus, preaching tirelessly. This Tunupa, they say, cursed a certain city to be drowned, and today it is called Yamkui, Kapakocha, the lake, which all the Indians say was anciently a principal city, and now is a lake. Another thing they say is that on top of a high hill called Kachapukara, there was an idol in the form of a woman, and they say that Tunapa hated this idol, and afterwards he caused fire to come down and burn the hill and the idol, destroying and melting the hill as if it had been wax. And even today there are remnants of that awesome miracle, never before heard of in the world. They say that Tunapa continued his course by the river Chakamarka until he came to the sea, and from there he crossed the strait to the other sea. This has been verified by extremely ancient Incas. End quote. Juan de Betanzos was among the first conquistadors who invaded Peru with Francisco Pizarro. Immediately upon entering the country, he began studying Quechua, the language of the Incas, until he became proficient enough to be named official interpreter for the royal court. He was skilled enough in the native language that his first publications were Spanish Quechua dictionaries. Betanzos married one of the former Inca princesses and lived in Cusco, compiling data and observations firsthand until 1551, when his major treatise on the traditions and history of the Andean Indians, Suma y Narración de los Incas, appeared. He took special care to preserve the order of speaking of the natives in his writings. This is Petanzo's description of the god Veracocha. Quote, Asking the Indians what idea or figure they had of this Veracocha when the ancients saw him according to their traditions they had received, they told me that he was a man of tall stature and that he had a white clothing that came to his feet, and that this robe he had drawn at the waist, and that he had short hair, and that he had a crown on his head like a priest would wear, and that he walked with his head bare, and that he had a certain thing in his hands that looked to them like the small religious books the priests carry around with them today. I asked them the name of this person in whose honor the stone monuments was erected, and they told me that he was called Contiki Veracocha Pachayakchakik, which in their tongue means God, creator of earth. End quote. The Spanish historian, geographer, Catholic missionary Jose de Acosta, in the essay The Natural and Moral History of the Indies, published in 1590, tells how the Indians tell of their origin. Quote, they mention a lot of the flood that happened in their country. Indians say that all people drowned in this flood, but Veracocha came out of Lake Titicaca, who first settled in Tiwanaku, 
where to this day you can see the ruins of ancient and very strange buildings, and from there he moved to Cusco, which began the multiplication of the human race." End quote. Most of all, Viracocha is remembered in the legends as a teacher. Before his arrival, legends say, quote, People lived in complete disarray. Many walked naked like savages. They had no houses or other dwellings except caves from where they walked around the neighborhood in search of something edible, end quote. They say that Veracocha changed all this and laid the foundation for a golden age which subsequent generations remembered with nostalgia. Moreover, all legends agree that he carried out his civilizational work with great kindness, if possible, avoided the use of force, benevolent teachings and personal example. These are the main methods that he used to equip people with the technology and knowledge necessary for cultural and productive life. He was especially credited that he introduced medicine metallurgy, agriculture, animal husbandry, writing, which later was forgotten, and an understanding of the complex foundations of technology and constructions in Peru. The chronicler Sarmiento de Gamboa had this to say about Viracocha's physical appearance, quote, If it was in one form or the other, all agrees that Viracocha was the creator of these people. The tradition is that he was a man of average height, white and dressed in a white robe like an alb fastened around the waist and that he carried a staff and a book in his hands." End quote. Sarmiento confirms that all the buildings, temples that were in Tiwanaku at that time were for Veracocha's residence and even his physical appearance. Quote, and they made the buildings in Tiwanaku, whose ruins can now be seen, for the home of Veracocha. Father Jose de Acosta points out that Tiwanaku was the seat of Viracocha. In the book Historia Natural y Moral de los Indias, published in 1590, quote, In any case, the Indians say that with that flood all men drowned, and they say that Viracocha came out of the great lake Titicaca, which made a seat in Tiwanaku, where today ruins and pieces of old buildings can be found. One of the earliest chronicles of the Inca Empire was written in the 1550s by Juan de Betanzos. Here is an excerpt from his book. Quote, in ancient times, they say, the country and province of Peru was dark, having neither light nor day. In those times, there were a certain people in it, which people had a certain chief who commanded them and to whom they were subjected. Of the name of that people, and of the chief who commanded them, they have no recollection. And in those times, when all was night in this land, they say that from a lagoon in this country of Peru, in the province called Colasoyu, came a chief whom they called Contiki Veracocha, who, they say, had with him a certain number of people, which number they do not recollect. And after he had come out of this lagoon, he went to a place near it, where today stands a village called Tihonaku, in this aforesaid province of Kulao. Betanzos tells us that from archaeological research they found the remains enough to know that Tihonaku was no ordinary village, and that it was the religious center of one of the most important pre-Inca hierarchies. He went on in great detail about Veracocha's activities, when he reigned in Tiwanaku, before the Incas came, quote, Veracocha began his religious activities in Tiwanaku as a sculptor in stone, end quote. Betanzos proceeds to write that from Tiwanaku, Veracocha sent away all of his companions, except for two, in the direction of the rising sun. Veracocha then dispatched his two remaining companions, one to the south and the other to the north while he himself went to the northwest towards Cusco. Regarding the physical description of Veracocha, Betanzo states, quote, According to the Indians, Veracocha was a tall bearded man, dressed in a long white shirt, girdled at the waist. End quote. According to the native legends, Veracocha walked from Tiwanaku 
towards the northwest in the direction of Cusco. In the book Bridge of Time, the author A.J. Schrager writes, quote, When Viracocha appeared at the province called Cacha of the Canas Indians, he found the Indians all armed. They did not recognize Viracocha and were about to kill him. When he saw them coming, he caused fire to fall from the skies, which began burning on a hill near the place where the Indians were. The Indians, upon seeing the flames and being afraid of being consumed in the fire, dropped their weapons and ran forwards to Viracocha, throwing themselves on the ground before him. On seeing this, Viracocha took his staff in his hands, put out the fire by giving it several blows. With the fire out, Veracocha spoke to the Indians and told them he was their creator. The Indians built a marvelous huaca on that spot, and still later their descendants raised a large stone statue, approximately 12 foot tall, in memory of Veracocha. This statue was still intact when the Spanish conquered Peru. The Spanish found the large stone image representing a man of good stature with a long beard measuring more than a palma, meaning a palm of a hand. Two Heral quoted one Garcilaso de la Vega, who went on to say that the Spanish later deliberately destroyed this temple and the statue. It was also told that the descendants of these Kacha or Canas Indians later brought great quantities of gold and silver to this Huaca. After the wonderful accomplishments at Kacha, Viracocha and his followers continued their activities. They next came to the place now called Tambo de Urcus, six leagues from the present Cusco. Viracocha then climbed up to the top of a high mountain and sat down on the summit. Because Viracocha sat down on the summit, the natives by now reverencing him caused to be built a marvelous huaca there. Since Viracocha had seated himself in this place, those that built that waka also placed a bench of gold, further creating a golden statue of Viracocha, which was then seated on the golden bench. The value of the statue was said to be between 16,000 to 18,000 pesos when the Spaniards captured the city. The huge temple at Cacha was devoted to the worship of Viracocha. Inside this architectural masterpiece, the Spanish found a huge stone statue of the divine priest king Contiki Veracocha himself, represented as a long robed man of regal bearing with a long beard. A contemporary Inca, Garcilaso, chronicling the encounter, wrote, quote, The Spaniards, after seeing this temple and the statue with the form that has been described, wanted to make out that St. Bartholomew might have traveled as far as Peru to preach to the Gentiles and that the Indians had made this statue in memory of the event." End quote. After leaving Tambo de Urcus, Veracocha went on to what is now Cusco. It is said that he gave the name Cusco. When the Spanish entered Cusco's sacred temple, Coricancha, they found realistic images in gold and marble of the ruler of the original Veracochas. Contiki Veracocha, whom the Incas venerated as a god. The Spaniards melted down the gold image and smashed the marble statue to pieces, leaving only a written record in which they described the image as being both to the hair, complexion, features, raiment and sandals, just as painters represent the apostle Saint Bartholomew. In addition to that, there was a temple called Quishuarcancha, dedicated to Veracocha. When Pizarro and the Spanish entered this temple, they found a statue there in human form about the size of a 10-year-old boy, and it was made entirely of solid, solid gold, of very high quality. From Cusco, Contiki Veracocha went to the Pacific coast, and here on the Pacific coast just southwest of Cusco, you find the enigmatic Nazca Lines. The Nazca Lines are one of the mysteries of the past of mankind, huge and bizarre drawings, geoglyphs of the Nazca Desert Plateau. Their purpose are unknown to anyone, as well as their age. 
The local people say that these images are not the work of people, but of the demigods, the Viracocha, who left their mark in the Andes many thousands of years ago. Tony Morrison, a zoologist who studied the lines with Gerald Hawkins, concludes in his book Pathways to the Gods from 1978 with a quotation from the Spanish magistrate Luis de Monzon, who wrote in 1586 about the work stones and the ancient roads near Nazca. Quote, the old Indians say that they have knowledge of their ancestors, that in very old times, before the Incas ruled over them, there came to the land another people they call Veracochas, not many of them, and they were followed by the Indians who came after them listening to their word. And now the Indians say they must have been saintly persons, and so to them they built path that until now can be seen, long as a street, on whose sides they built down walls." A.J. Schrager writes in his book The Bridge of Time that Contiki Veracocha went to the province of Puerto Viejo on the Pacific coast, where he joins up with his group that went on ahead. The Spanish chronicler Betanzos writes, As they assembled in that place, Veracocha placed himself on the ocean together with them, wherefore it is said that he and his own people went on the water just as if they were walking on land. Evidently Veracocha had many subjects or disciples, and his family and followers, and in departing left on balsa rafts, which ride low in the water. To an observer ashore, the men moving about on a raft could appear as walking on water, and even the slightly choppy sea. Veracocha and his followers went on the sea, never to be seen. End quote. Pedro Guiteres de Santa Clara, who arrived in Peru in the years 1543 to 44, wrote that the Indians on the northern coast of Peru claimed that their ancestors were taught how to sail by Veracocha. Quote, the Indians of the town of Paita, Puerto Viejo, Tumbes, and the island of Apuna say that this way of sailing they had learned from their ancestors who had learned it from a man who had come from the sea in a raft with sails as they did now, and that this man was called Veracocha, and that this same man walked for a long time among their ancestors, teaching them good doctrine, and that later they did not know where he was and went, and that he was a good man, and that he spoke like them. A. J. Schrager writes in his book The Bridge of Time, that the departure of Contiki Veracocha from Puerto Viejo in northern Peru marks the ending of Viracocha period 1. Quote, this so far then is the period 1 Veracocha to distinguish it in our minds for what follows, which we will also label period 2 Veracocha. When period 1 Veracocha left, he slash they obviously left behind colonizers the settlers in the new land. Over the ensuing millenniums, they carried out the traditions of their ancestors, developing Peru with their knowledge and insight and living peacefully with the autochons of Peru. At around 450 AD, a battle took place at Lake Titicaca, wherein most of the white-bearded flaxen, red-haired, blue-eyed, fair-skinned, Celt-like descendants were massacred. Those that survived fled on balsa rafts into the Pacific Ocean to the mercy of the prevailing westerly blowing winds and currents, landing on Easter Island, Hawaii and other Polynesian islands as far as New Zealand. These were the Veracochas of period two. It was the Inca Kari from Katcha who led his minions into battle at Lake Titicaca. Kare defeats and massacres the descendants of Veracocha I, and it was the high priest Contiki, quote unquote, who managed to escape with his family and survivors, aka Contiki Veracocha II, fleeing to the rafts of Balsa and into the Pacific currents and winds. They must have known that they were following the paths of Veracocha I of millenniums earlier. End quote. 